So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs, and welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, filming at the uh, Alt T Studios in Hopog, New York. And I'm pleased today to have the founder of Smash Parental Alienation. Uh, he actually has got a lot of titles. So, number one important title is good friend Mike Gilligan, somebody that uh, I've gotten to know over the last couple of years. And, uh, very good good friend of mine, dear friend. I, I care a lot about this guy. So that's number one. Thank number you. two, founder of Smash Parental Alienation. Number three, loving father. Absolutely. I guess I shouldn't do the order that way. But also uh, a victim of the Suffolk County family court system. And uh, Mike is still in the system now, so I know this is difficult for him to get out. In fact, he had a, he had court today where, where he did a, actually had a, a good day in court. Uh, for a change, he had a judge, uh, Judge uh, McKenzie, who, at least today, mm -hmm. seemed to listen to him. She went in to me, uh, we'll talk about your case a little bit, but I don't want you to get too much into it, but as an observer and somebody, I was there covering the case for Long Island Backstory today. And what I got was that we went in and the judge automatically thought you were the bad guy. And it was troublesome to me because I sat there and said, man, this poor guy, I know what you went through, Mike. And I'm sitting there, this guy's a victim of, of what his wife did and his children being turned against him. And the judge is now victimizing him too. And it really, really upset me. But then you turned around and said to the judge, you know what, judge, all I want to do is see my kids. I want my constitutional right to see my kids. My, my rights have been violated in here. And that's all I want. I don't want my ex-wife in jail. I don't want to get money from her. I take care of my part of the agreement. I pay my child support. I was a police officer for 26 years. I, I served the city. I, I help people all the time. All I want to do, Judge, is see my kids. And I saw the judge, her demeanor change, and she turned around and looked at your ex-wife and said, why isn't he seeing the kids? And at first I said, well, thank God she did. But you know what? Two and a half years it took you to get the judge to look at your ex-wife and say, why isn't he seeing the kids? That's, that is more, when people take pe uh, people to court in Suffolk County for money, for child support, they get a court date in six weeks. Right. They never wait two years. Your ex-wife filed, which is gonna be thrown out by the time you have the next episode, right. but she filed for an order of protection against you. You got a court date next week, which you should, mm -hmm. because you have an order of protection hanging over your head. But what's more important than somebody seeing their kids? Isn't that more important than money? Correct. Yet it took two and a half years. Yeah. At this point, the damage is so done already. In fact, you were saying, you know, I don't even know what I'm here for because at this point, the damage is done. And you had a law guardian who was, I'll say, like this woman, was so biased because the judge asked her what was going on. She said, well, it started off that the kids did want to see him. They did want to have dinner with him. But now as time goes on, things have changed and now they don't want to be with him anymore. Well, of course time is going on. Mm -hmm. They go home to mommy every night for two years. Mm -hmm. They know, they know who they're going to be seeing, and they know they're not going to be seeing you, mm -hmm. so they can't, they can't be nice to you. Right. So, of course, she should have said, yeah, but this is the way it started. When he filed this petition, you listen, you, couldn't, you didn't do anything to turn the kids against yourself. You haven't seen, the, seen them. Right. Well, so, go ahead. Like, I'm sorry. I, I went off. No, no, no. It really bothers me seeing this happen to somebody, you know, that, that I care about, and uh, all you want to do is, I know you talk about your kids all the time. Right. And you, you're, you're a loving father. Yeah, there's so much on my mind. I, I, I just want to, th uh, first of all, I'm very grateful for you, um, Gary. I consider you a friend and, and, and a mentor in a lot of ways. You've opened my eyes to the court system here in Suffolk County wider than I was already being exposed to it, but you've really uh, helped me um, see the truth. And it's painful. Well, because, and I think I give you, what I do is I try to give people a perspective. Mm -hmm. Because you're in the forest. Right. And, and, and you can't see, and you're so, your, your, your emotions are right. running wild, then you get up, you know, you have days that you're up, you have days that you, this is a roller coaster. Absolutely. It's not healthy, it's, our bodies are not meant to yeah. do this. So I try to give a, a perspective, and I think when somebody gets to the point where they can listen, it's hard to take advice. Right. You know, but you get to the point where you say, hey, you know what, Gary's been through this, and he's right, maybe I should listen to him. You were, today, for me, in just the conversation on the phone and, and showing up for me gave me even more strength to, to proceed. And like I said, I'm at the, I was at the point where I, 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 I wasn't really nervous, but I, I had, I, enough was enough. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of this mess, and I was ready to do what I had to do. What I thought was strange, though, about 
the proceeding was is that sh she immediately, came, the judge came out and asked me to call a witness without saying, well, what about opening statements? Right. I, I mean, um, you know. Uh, but it's very difficult when somebody's pro se. Mm -hmm. There's really no guide line that says, okay, this guy's pro se, how do you represent you? How do you cross-examine yourself? How do you proceed? It's, it's a messy, because what do you do? Do you get up there and you ask yourself questions? I had somebody uh, said that what they did was they wrote down the list of questions and they asked the, the judge, would you mind if I have a court officer read me those questions? And that judge happened to uh, have agreed. Uh, what, I, what I actually recommend, and I'll give a little bit of free, I'm not an attorney, I don't even play one on TV, no. I don't want to be a lawyer, no. I never went to law school. No. This is a lay person saying, from my observation, right. what I like to tell people to do, when you're filing the petition mm -hmm. and you go into court, do not become a witness and question yourself. Right. When the judge said to you today, start with your witness, I would say if you're going forward, Your Honor, I'd like to make an opening statement and you make your whole case. Right. And during your opening statement is where you make your case. You never call yourself as a witness. Mm -hmm. You only call the other person. Now they don't have a right to cross-examine you because you've never been called as a witness. Right. So you get to say your whole thing. There's no objections. You don't object to an opening statement. Mm -hmm. And you just do your thing and you say your case and then you, you go ahead and cross-examine the other parties. Right. But, uh, but like I said, you, you, you did a great job today because I, like I told you going in there, Mike, just speak from the heart. Forget everything that yeah. you read you know, in all the law journals and, yeah. and all the research. All you want to do is go back to the big, try to bring it back to the basics. Right. You want to be a dad. You love your kids. That's Absolutely. it. No, that's the, the bottom line. I just want to be a father to love my kids. And uh, unfortunately, uh, my ex-wife, who's a high-conflict individual and has no empathy for anybody, because I left her and, and divorced her, uh, I'm out in her mind. And, uh, and, and in her mind, I have to be out with the kids as well. And... Um, I, I, I'm not standing for it. I, I, you know, what I mean, I, I pay, I pay two thousand fifty dollars a month in child support. Um, I've never had been in the arrears, and um, I, I, I've done. I, I've put up with allegations in when I was active on the New York City Police Department. I recently have to put up with with a with a, a frivolous allegation that, that now in order. But amazingly, you know, days before we're going to trial, I have. Yeah, what a coincidence! What right? a coincidence that was. You know what I mean? And uh, the the. The silver bullet, you know what I mean. Right. I, uh, yeah. You know, and uh, I, um, you know, uh, I, I felt good today. You know, uh, when we left. But then you also felt good because you got you spoke your piece and you said what you spoke from the heart. Right. And it, and the judge listened, which is, listen, I'm not a fan of Carol McKenzie. I got to tell you right now, oh, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of any of the judges. I'm not I mean, a fan of the, well, some some have been okay. Judge Poulos, I've had some good experiences with, but I'm not a fan of Judge. Mm -hmm. I had some personal experience with her. She's a nasty bitch. Mm -hmm. She looks at the man as they're guilty when you walk in the door. Mm -hmm. She is absolutely biased and looks at you like you're the. And she did it today too to you. I know you were the big. You didn't do a damn thing wrong. I know. You know, to me, she was victimizing the victim. Correct. Let me tell you, if you were a rape victim and somebody talked to you the way she talked to you, people would be disgusted. Yeah. You know, and how, again, two years for her to finally say, and then what, what bothered me, Mike, was that she said to you, well, Mr. Gillian, what do you want me to do if she doesn't make those kids go? That's not your job to right. tell. She's the judge. If that's the case, why do we have court orders? Why do we have laws? Right. I can personally give you some things that she could do. How about take away your freaking money that she's getting for child support? Exactly. And stop stop uh, rewarding her. For, for doing that. How about she has to go to parenting classes? Every time she doesn't go, she gets a week added to a parenting class. How about she goes to empathy classes? How about she gets psychological examinations? How about she does public service uh, for, for homeless? I can give you plenty of things. Right. But to just say, well, she can, and how ridiculous is that to say, What do you, how, how could she force them to go? Would she force them to go to school? What would they do? Mm -hmm. They would take the kids away. Right. If she said, I can't force him to go to school. He's 11 years old. I can't force him. He's too big. I can't force him to get his medical treatment. Right. I can't stop him from doing drugs. Right. I can't stop him from drinking. That's ridiculous to say. Exactly. And that judge should know better. She put it on you. The burden should not be on you. Correct. You did the right thing, Mike. You went to court because you're a law-abiding citizen. You believe in the law. You're, you, didn't take the, you didn't go to the house and grab your kid and say, look, today is Wednesday. This court order says I have the kids. I'm going to go there and rip the kids out of the house, mm -hmm. and I'm going to throw them in my car and not going to let them go till Thursday. You didn't do that. You went no. to court, and you asked the court for help, and two and a half years later, you didn't get it. No. It was That's a, not right. Yeah. It was a German after a German after a German. There's always a reason I would get a call from my lawyer, and, I, and, and that's why I let the, the attorney go, because it was obvious to you me that... You paid $1,500 a, a day for uh, 13, 14 visits. Right. And it's uh, it just uh, it just kept happening. I expected it to happen today, and you know, unfortunately, it didn't happen, and it, and it turned out fairly well. But uh, 
you know, it's all about, I want to be able to protect my sons. And the only way I was able to really protect my sons was to really back off because the negative influences on them, you know, with, with the system being involved and, 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 and the, uh, the law guardian especially, and, and I had been in contact with my son uh, through Instagram and because um, that was the only way he could reach out with, to me without his mother knowing about it. You know, uh, I was being told from him that, you know, he, he was being, sw they were, him and his brother were being swayed against me by the law guardian. Right. And I didn't bring that up today, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, I didn't believe anything she said. When she said that the boys didn't want to see me, I just didn't believe that at all. Especially, you know, I just didn't believe them. The little guy, uh, you know, he's, he's I, I mean, he's been brainwashed. But, you know, the common sense question for me would be, why? And the judge did ask it, but she, when she didn't get an answer, she moved on. Yeah. To me, the judge said, tell me, right. why? And then their answer was, well, new things have started to happen, meaning that you're an activist right. and you're on TV. Let me tell you, if, if you were seeing your kids, right. nobody here would know who Mike Gilligan is. Correct. It would be no smashed parental alienation. No, no. You'd be going on with your life, driving your school bus as a retiree, and loving your children. No, I I may still in a, still may have been on the on the police department, uh, you know what I mean. And, and and all I wanted to do was I say this: I'd rather be anonymous and be f out on the right. Great South Bay fishing right. with my children. I would rather be anonymous. You know, I, I could have still remained to be a police officer, but the you know the the threats of allegations when you're an active police officer weighed heavy on me. I, I left the job without my weapons. Right. I didn't want that. You know what I mean. I, and apparently, she just found out about it because. The police reports indicated they uh, they ran me for guns, right, and, so and, and and I could just imagine they were disappointed to find out sure. that there was nothing on right. register with Suffolk well, County. I tell people the policemen all the time. I say, look, if you're going through a divorce, do not bring your service revolver home. Check it in, leave it in the precinct, yes. but do not tell your ex-wife that you're doing that because I promise you, yes. there will be an allegation that you pulled your service revolver, right. and now you got a slam dunk yeah. because you can say, wait a minute, exactly. my service resolve revolver has been checked in every day. It will happen. It will happen. It has course, happened. It has it happened. It will happen. I, I, was, uh, I did that for a long time. And I was a PBA delegate, and I used to advise other officers to do that as well to protect them. And I did that for a long time, a really long time. And believe me, uh, I, I, leaving the city, going home, sometimes I ran into stuff, and I was like, oh, my, uh-oh. Right. I got now I'm you know defenseless, and uh, I can't do nothing but call, like everybody else, 911. You're safer than doing that. One of the things that, I, that got me today, and I don't know if we can play the song on the, during the show, uh, without a license for it but one of the things that got me is you're talking about what the judge said well what happened with the therapy that didn't work out you had a, a quarter and, and you said well you know it didn't work out because I was told that I had to pay a thousand dollars I have a court order that says I have to see my kids and you're telling me I got to pay a thousand dollars there was something that came to me after we left that I should have should have brought up and originally when when Mr. when the when the psychologist was recommended to me by the the, the referee Mr. Kelly I um I was told by the law guardian, Miss Mary, and my attorney at the time, um, who I just let go, uh, that uh, he was going to get to the root cause of what was happening, um, and I and I believed them. You know, I said, "Okay, oh, I'll, I'll go for it." So I we went, we we did that. Well, it took me. I went th immediately the next day. I had an appointment with this guy. Right, because you're excited that you. Thought you I, yes, I wanted to get the process yeah. going. It took over four weeks for him to get in touch with with my ex-wife and the kids he called she wasn't anxious <laughs> oh he called me to try to give to, to get an email address and a telephone number to get her to, to come in well that finally happened and uh, the bottom line was is that the stipulation didn't indicate that he to get to the root cause it stipulated on there that he was going to help facilitate visitation and apparently the stipulation trumped his ethics because he he used it, in, a, in my opinion, to his economic benefit. He was going to wean me into a half hour uh, uh, a week. I can't go to uh, soccer games. I can't be involved in uh, the extracurricular activities, um, this, that, and the other thing. And, and I was just like, you know, I, I rejected him after he had met with my ex and, and the boys. I said, listen, I want nothing to do with this. I said, um, this is the best. I said, this is what I said to him. This is the best you professionals can do, the judge and you. A half hour. I have a I have a court stipulation agreement that's signed by Judge McKenzie that gives me every week overnight. So if there's no reason, you should have it. You know this. 
Well, first, one of the things that got me, they said the $1,000, and the song kept going through my head, you know, 1877 oh. Cars for Kids. Oh. And I'm thinking, this is cash for kids. I know, it's definitely cash for seven, kids. Cash for kids. Yeah. If you want to see your kids, Mr. Gilligan, you'll pay that $1,000, and then we'll, work, then we'll work it out. It would have been a $1,000 a month. He, and he, he was miffed because I was just so excited to go to get this, the process started. I, I, sh I showed up the first day without my checkbook. He was so pissed off and annoyed that I didn't have a check for $1,000, because it was a retainer, $1,000 retainer. It was, and I was like, are you serious? I'm like, a retainer? I never heard of this with a psychologist. I was like, you know, um, but he's, it, it, and in my opinion, it was services sold from the bench. That's bottom line. I mean, if you look at, you know, there's all these rules that funeral homes can't overcharge because people are coming in in distress, mm -hmm. and you can't take advantage of, of these people. Right. Your, your kids are being withheld from you. Talk about being under duress. And they're saying, well, if you want to see your kids, you're going to have to pay this. First of all, why didn't the person who was withholding the kids have to pay the $1,000? Correct. And then if, it, if, if the person says, well, it's not true, mm -hmm. then, then it gets reallocated. But that person should, should have to pay the, the, uh, the $1,000 yeah. to see, you know. And what will be interesting now is that uh, this last round, uh, I finally got it. Miss Mary is, it was just extremely unprofessional with me. I didn't, I, don't, I didn't get quarterly statements. I know that I'm not allowed to communicate with her, you know, it, it regularly. I, I ask about the kids, but at least I never knew when the kids met with her. I only just received a, a statement from her uh, a, a day and a half ago. And um, the bottom line is, is that um, I just lost my train of thought. But, but I think, it, it's, it's, you know what, your ex-wife knows. Yeah, she knew so how everything. how is that being fair? Oh, oh she knew everything. Every, you, you should both know what's going on. Yeah. You know, what's, what's and going. every time I left court, they always left together. Right. So that was an indication to me that uh, the fix was in. Right. But, what, you know, one of the things that, that strikes me also, you talk about the reunification therapy, and we're going to work you back in. Here's what I say. Somebody goes to Iraq, mm -hmm. and they leave their two-year-old child, and they come back a year later, they haven't seen their child. <laughs> how would they say... You know, you haven't seen your kid in a year. We're yeah. going to reunification therapy. That's and we're going to wean you in to see bullshit. You get off the plane, you hug your kid, and you go home. Right. You didn't do anything wrong. You don't need time yeah. to get used to the situation. I, I brought that up to, to my attorney, and I said the same exact thing. What are they doing for the guys that come home from service from overseas? Uh, they have to say, who come home to, a week? He's been gone for two years, and they come home, and the kid's three years old. He does, the kid doesn't even recognize mm -hmm. him. Do they go through this unification process with them? And, and, and quite frankly, when this was happening, I had had my ch children away with me for t almost two weeks in Utah fishing and, and being with my mom. And um, uh, we had a great time. And then as soon as I brought them back, uh, my ex-wife just, every time I showed up for my visit, n nobody would be home. Nobody would be home. And it was, be and, but I had been experiencing this type of alienation since I left her. There was always something, you know what I mean? Uh, even just taking my kids to a birthday party, you know, I'd show up for a visit and they'd say, oh, I'd have, you know, I'd have them overnight. She said, oh, you have to have them back by three. I said, well, why? Well, they have a birthday party to go to. I said, okay, well, I'll take them. Well, you don't know these people. They don't want to meet you. I'm like, why not? I said, and then, but you know, the, my boys were so conditioned to this that it was horrible to see how they, they, you know, they were like, they would try to convince me, Dad, we'll just, you know, let us go. Mom will take us. Right, because they didn't want you know, to. They didn't want to. Didn't be in the conflict. No, and um, it was, it, it was very sad to see, my, especially my little guy, who at, you know, up until six years old, he was always fighting with my ex about, it's Dad's day, Ma, and then all of a sudden, the, it, got it got knocked out of him big time. And he and he's now extremely alienated from me, and. Uh, but I think the courts did this, Mike, because let me tell you. Yeah. From a kid's point of view, they see I haven't seen my dad in two years, and the court didn't do mm -hmm. something about it. They did. There must be a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why nobody's making me see my dad. Mm -hmm. So I think that that. that they, they encourage this alienation. They, they let it happen because there's a subliminal, just like I tell people when they say, well, I didn't do anything wrong, but the judge said, until the trial, if you want to see your kid, we're going to send you to the EAC center with the supervised visits. And I say, don't do that because that kid gets the message. They have to go in, they're screened. It's like going to jail. Yeah. There's a person watching them. Well, why does somebody need to watch it? They must, maybe the, the kids aren't stupid. No. In the back of their mind, they're thinking, well, somebody thinks that my dad's going to hurt me. Yeah. For what message do your kids get? Because I can't. They have to say, "Well, if my dad loves me, he didn't do anything wrong. Why isn't the judge making right. him see me?" For a while, we were going to the fifth precinct to do an exchange, and uh, and my ex really accentuated the negativity to, uh, on my kids about that, and they they expressed fear um, about going to the police station. And I said to them, "I said, boys, I said, Dad's a policeman. 
Right. These are our friends. They're not going to do nothing. This is just, you know, a place to go and it's a safe and there's no conflict and that's what we want. We just want to have, you know, and, and that'll be that. And, but their, their mom was really uh, uptight about that when the judge, and it wasn't even, my, what, you know, I, my request, uh, uh, it was ordered. You know, that's what we would do at, at a conference. But, uh, you know, uh, it's a shame what happens. And um, again, all I want to do is see my kids be, and, love my, and love them. And, and you're right, the court system encourages the, beha the bad behavior and it, and it makes it more acute. Just, uh, it gets worse and worse and worse. And here I am, two years later, these two poor boys, their minds have been, you know, negatively influenced to reject me for no reason at all. Well, Mike, let me, you know, I know your kids do, according to your ex-wife, I should say, they, they do watch the show, and maybe this is their way of, of your shows that you do when you're posting, maybe that's their way of staying in contact with you. So, you know, is there anything that you wanted to, that you would want to say to your kids, you know, that if, if they're watching now? Don't say their names. But. No. I would just say, boys, I'm here. Uh, I've always been here. Um, nothing's ever changed. Um, and it could, it, 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 to some respects, it can go back to the way it was. That, and, and, and that uh, you're entitled to have mom and dad. Uh, it's not just about me. I'm not looking to take my boys away from anybody, especially their mother. They're entitled to have a relationship with their mom and a relationship with me. And it's that simple. I love you. And, um, it, it, it's going to get better. It, you know what I mean? It's going to get better. It's okay. We can work through this. And, um, uh, and, it's, it, and I'm very grateful f for friends like Gary Jacobs here who have shown me support. And if it wasn't for guys like Gary, Carlos Rivera, you know, uh, um, you know standing by me and uh, giving me encouragement and some advice. And, uh, and I'm grateful that I'm, I'm not stubborn and I, was, I listened. And um, um, everything's going to be okay. Well, keep up the good uh, the work that you do, Mike. Keep up the fight. I know part of the, the game plan of the courts is to beat you down to the point that you've given up. And I know you've had some, some down times where yeah. you've questioned, am I doing the right thing fighting because I'm the only one fighting for my kids and am I making it worse for them? And I don't think you are, Mike. As I told you, you're a loving father. You have so much, you have so much to offer your kids and you should keep fighting for them because their lives aren't as good without you being there. So you need to, you may not win, you may not win, you know, it's, it's but possible, you know yeah. what? You can hold your head up high saying, you know what? I fought to, I fought for you guys to, to be with you down, down the road. So, uh, absolutely. Uh, so what a tragedy that'll be if, that, if that's what happens. Right. It, it certainly would be. But uh, and everything that you do and your kids see, I'm sure, uh, your smash parental alienation, a word that you probably never heard of before you went to the court system. I know I didn't know what alienation was no. uh, before the court system. But you know what? You're fighting. You're starting that group that really, really impacts other, other, people's, uh, other people's lives. And I hope that you do win and you win. You get to see your, your children again and you do go on with this. And they become advocates too. That's really I think what that's, I, I think, uh, Gary, I think that's the most important thing. I don't want this to happen to them. They're going to be men someday. I don't want them to go through what and Mike and Gary right, went this, through. Believe it or not, the cycle is, is continues there. because it's, it's interesting how kids who are alienated from a parent yes they not that they become an alienator they end up becoming alienated from their children a high Correct. percentage right. i don't know why it's like that but it's 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 an unbelievable it's it's, un it's unbelievable and we have to you know educate them and 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 you know i don't want them to go through that but Ga gary thank you so much right. thank thank you for thank you i know so it's much. not easy for you you know, it takes a lot out of you emotionally at yeah. court this morning, uh -huh. but I appreciate that you came and, and, and told your story. Thank I'm you. Gary Jacobs, and thank you for joining us here at Long Island Backstory. You know, the show's making a difference, and uh, I say it on, on a lot of my shows. If what you see strikes a chord with you, maybe you Googled it, maybe you're watching it on TV, share the story uh, on social media. Share, my, share Mike's story. He's not asking anybody for money. Just share a story. It's free. Click the share button. Get it out there. The more people that see it, you never know who's going to hit the right attorney who says, I want to help this guy for free. Right. You're never going to know if you hit the right person who says, you know what, this happened to me, mm -hmm. and I've got extra money, and I'm going to help do this guy. The right politician. You just don't know where it's going to reach. So right. please, you know, share the show. You know, Mike, again, Mike is just a great father, and he's done nothing but want to love, love his children. We'll see you again next week.
I think every single person who receives a red light camera ticket should fight their ticket. Why? Because it's nothing but a cash grab and a cash cow. We've all been told that it's all about safety and there's no quotas. You prove that it's got nothing to do with safety and nothing, and it is quotas. Red light cameras are nothing more than a tax, plain and simple. Don't anybody ever tell you any different. The red light cameras are, uh, are, are a fraud. Long Island Backstory. Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs is uncovering the truth on Long Island. The family court system. Red light cameras. Corruption in local politics. The heroin epidemic. Corrupt judges. At Long Island Backstory, we uncover the truth that the Cablevision news monopoly won't dare touch. We uncover the details you won't see on News 12 or in Newsday. We are local independent media at its best. Long Island Backstory, available on Public Access TV and on YouTube. your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. They said a bottle was just a bottle. that no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. <laughs> 